Um, just really happy. Like, um, like 2019 was a different feeling completely, like getting that first one. But then I was disgruntled after after the Worlds in uh, Mexico. I thought I should have came away with the gold. Um, things went didn't go my way, but I knew I was in a decent position. Since then, we've um, knew it, knowing we were coming onto KPMP, coming into this Worlds, changed my fight style slightly. And with the rules becoming a bit cleaner, we knew every, how everything was supposed to be going. So we cleaned my game up a bit. And Martin said, we, and we said then, they were like, I'll be world champion again in six months. And exact, that's exactly what I've been working towards. And that's exactly what I did. I think, um, especially in how the game's gone now, the best two out of the three rounds, it's got even more like mentally, a mental game. Especially because you can mess up that first round. That first round is so important. With, especially with the system, no one wants to give points, everyone's quite cagey. And then people know how to fight. When, you, when you're number one, you've got, that, you've got a bounty in your back, everyone wants to take that spot from you, take that, come, take that round from you. And then the old game, because of my fitness, I knew I could wear people down, I could wear people down, but they take that first round off you, it gives them confidence, and then you have to try and open up, and it just works onto them, everyone scores them counters. So that, I, find, I think that first round is crucial, trying to be composed, trying to be collected. And my first fight shown how easy it is once you make a mistake. I made a mistake, rushed, caught again, and then the second round got taken away from me. But I knew what it was. It wasn't anything where my head went. I knew what I did, came back, and I was composed for the third round. And then after that, I was pretty smooth sailing. All the first rounds can be quite close, but I know... We always say it can be nil-nil for, for a minute. You to keep doing the right stuff and you'll get the reward. So just about trying to break him down, trying to be patient, wait for my shot. And then, as you saw, in most of my fights, the second round became quite comfortable in the end because in the first round, people try and steal it right at the end because they, what's the point open up early? But in the second round, if I've got that first round of my belt, eventually they have to start coming. They have to start trying to take them risks. And that's where I ended up being more like a flow state. As soon as I saw him open up then, I was like, the points just racked up it happened in my semi-finals happened in my finals and happened pretty much throughout the day and that's where i want to be in most of my fights um i think it's just because it is the big one i think like like i said i always wanted to be a world and olympic champion that's my goals and the, the world has always well since it started it's been the world has been always the one then it came into the olympics but i think when the olympics goes down to four weights each still to me and then everyone gets to come into the worlds where it's only the top 16 in the olympics so worlds can be harder every four years obviously it's a big different different set but every two years everyone wants to be that world champion it's within the taekwondo community it's sometimes a bigger achievement so a lot of people can put pressure on themselves like oh i need a world i need that world medal i need to put it and then like i said it is every once normally once every two years where the grand prix is quite constant so it's quite in and out but that's what it is. People put that pressure on and everyone wants it that much. And sometimes people can want it too much and it can go against them, like overrushing, like putting that pressure on yourself. But it's, like I said, it's a ment mental game more than anything. A lot of us can kick very well. A lot of us can do all the kicks, do the spins, do the back legs, do the stabs. But it's who's got that edge, who can put it all together and stay composed in them high pressure situations, especially when things aren't going your way. It's like um, Korea, I fought in the final quite chilled quite relaxed he plays you play that game against him he snuck, snuck it against um jordan snuck it against uzbekistan that's how he wants to play so going to that final like can't let him do that i have to put it on him put it on him put that fight and cause them situations for to score points so each person takes fights differently and if you make can make that wrong mistake it can cost you the fight in, a, in an instance yeah it, it means everything like i said especially when i did it in 2019 it's like I said when I first it were only I only wanted I never thought about being double world champion triple world champion it was the one I don't I'm not be, trying to be greedy I just, I just want the golds the gold of the world's gold and then 2019 I said if someone told me I would have done it within three years I would have laughed you had Lee Yoon on top of the game all these other people why would I be the one to then I'm especially being GB's first male world champion and then still like the only male world champion for able-bodied and now double I'd be like why am I gonna be the one to do it and then it just it just shows that everything's paid off, not just for me, but then my mum, my coaches, everything like they invested in me, the money, like Martin Baker, Mark Moores, none of them did it to make a profit out of me. You could tell they were fully invested, like took me away, paid themselves to come abroad to coach me. Mum took me up and down the country even before I joined the team in 2016, from January till um, 
July, every Monday and Friday, she drove me to Manchester, stayed there, took me back because she knew I had something. And then believing me sometimes, even when I didn't as a cadet and junior, I knew I could do it. And it, it's just, when you do that, it's just that proud moment of like, it's not just for me even, I rang my mum um, straight after my fight and it's not it's not just for me, it's for everyone who's been with me. It's for Martin, Martin Stamper as well. Like you see see that bond we've had since uh, since 2016. And every time I do it, it's just that, it's that relationship you have with everyone. Like none of it's just for me. And every time I go and put a on the table, it's just, I'm just thankful that they actually believed in me and put, because not everyone does, not everyone has that support network. And I'm really thankful I have. <laughs> yeah, I always, I, what I say normally is that Everyone's got like a different time clock. There were people, like I didn't do great in juniors uh, or cadets until my last year of junior where I won the junior Europeans. Before that, I meddled abroad, but it never, no, never really clicked. But I did believe in myself that I could go all the way. And then if I didn't then, I could have thrown in the towel, said I'm done with Taekwondo, it's not my calling. But I believed that I could. There were people from Great Britain doing better than me, going to the majors, performing. But I was like, no, I'm here for the long run. And I believed in that, like everything's a journey. When I first, even when I first joined the team, it's, it wasn't about meddling straight away. It's about that consistency. It's about putting that performance in, going in and coming out going, yeah, if I, want, if I go and lose to the best person first fight, but I went and put in a decent performance, you have a stepping stone, you have that building block. So it's all about them small victories, even though you might lose like quite, quite consistently or even you might go out like um, the first time I fought Lee Dune, I lost by 19 points but then we came back and it wasn't it wasn't oh yeah we're miles away from him we were like all right a few adjustments we could could beat him next time and everyone would be like oh definitely not you're gonna get beat again easy three months later I beat him at Grand Slam so it's just coming back and every every loss is a learning curve and it's if you if you feel disappointed but if you like I said we fight constantly so if you go oh I lost here You'll just lose Rome next week. If I lost here and took that mind frame into the next comp, I'm just going to lose there. If I win here, but I'm like, oh yeah, I'm winning, I'm the best. I'll go and lose in Rome because there's always someone coming for you. There's always the next person trying to get a gold because there's some top competitors always. But yeah, anytime win or lose, there's always valuable lessons to learn and always ways to improve. And that's probably the biggest take from it. For me, it's tracking, tracking your progression. Like in training, it's going... Say you're working on new techniques, you start doing it on the pads and then you start feeling sharp, feeling confident. Then you start taking it into more like tactical application. Then even after that, then it's like, all right, now I'm going to take it into sparring until you eventually feel confidence taking it in the ring. But in general, it's getting in, getting in that ring. You can't, you can't be afraid. Once you're afraid, you'll, you'll, you'll lose. It doesn't matter who you come against. And that's, that's one thing what um, people, people do do. I think sometimes people can show too much respect so that it's happened with pe fi people fighting me. I went in against Lee Dune and, um, and a lot of the top athletes, knowing if I make a mistake, they could get me. Even at, even 2019, I was like, if I get in there, I could be embarrassed in front of home crowd. But it's not going, oh, that could happen. It's going, all right, I need to be on my best. They're going to bring the best out of me, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to give everything I've got. So if anyone you fight is going, all right, I'm going to give my best I've got. And then, all right, you mess up. I'd, ra I'd rather lose. I'd easily get shown up and like, but tried rather than going. Oh, I uh, I just lost, but then I'm didn't really do anything. Never gave myself an opportunity to win. And then, how, how much information you get? All right, I conceded here. This is why I conceded there. You can watch it back, and then you go into training again and restart. You put the stepping blocks again. You start from. All right, now we need to work on this technique. Now we need to work on this movement. And then each competition, that's why I said, it's not, you don't track by the medals start at the start, because if you do, you're not seeing them and you think you're in nowhere. If you lose 20, by 20 points, then you lose by 15, then 10, you're showing you're going in the right direction. And that's why it's just going in there to challenge. And eventually you will start challenging, taking a round off people. And then hopefully you eventually start beating people. Thank you guys for your continued support. It's been a great world championships and I'll see you at the Rome GP.